The sloth owl is a bird descended from Asian owls that has opted for an arboreal lifestyle. It has lost the ability to fly, and a claw has developed at the end of its atrophied wings to confidently climb trees. Its ecological niche is similar to that of modern sloths, but it is still more agile and moves more quickly. Its plumage is greenish to blend in with the forest canopy it never leaves. It feeds on leaves, nuts and larvae. Occasionally, it descends to the ground when the forest is less dense, quickly hopping in search of another perch, ready to use its claws at the slightest danger. The hairs on the back of the shielded hair have fused together to form protective scales, similar to those of a pandolin. These animals have traded their agility for these scales, with sharp edges that deter some predators. They no longer dig burrows and have become more solitary than their ancestors. During a long period after the extinction of their main predators like the wolf or lynx, hares had grown larger and slower, but the arrival of new predators millions of years later forced them to adopt new protection strategies once agility was lost. Although relatively common in many different ecosystems, their population remains sparse. As most predators had been exterminated by humans during their era, the ecological niche was vacant and allowed for other surprising animals to evolve in this direction. Boaf is a quadrupedal bat, a formidable predator that has retained the echolocation abilities of its ancestors. It is a solitary animal with rather aggressive behavior towards its counterparts. It is obviously carnivorous, hunting its prey at night, capable of taking down animals larger than itself. A skin membrane, a vestige of ancient bat wings, allows it to extend its jumps with some wind resistance, making it even faster. Gotilla is a very strange goat. A vast colony of goats thrived after the extinction of Homo sapiens, their behaviors became more complex, particularly for interspecific combat. This was made possible through physiological modifications, giving them a gorilla-like appearance with horns. Already adept at navigating steep mountain terrain, these goats also became interested in the nutrients offered by trees. They are not bipedal and appear to be less intelligent than primates. Battles occur during encounters between rival clans or during mating displays. Struggles are rarely fatal but are highly violent, in addition to their horns, they use their arms to subdue their rivals. During this period, Earth is experiencing a new ice age. The polar ice caps have expanded and now cover almost all of what was previously Canada. In our time, roadrunners lived in the hot deserts of the southern United States, but they have adapted to the climate changes and now live much closer to the poles. They still run as fast as ever, but their legs and wings are shorter to better withstand the cold of the tundra. However, these modifications now prevent them from flying. This bird hibernates during particularly harsh winters and accumulates fat to survive for a few months in the burrows they dig in the snow. After the disappearance of megafauna during the sixth extinction, many ecological niches were vacant. Many birds seized this opportunity and lost their ability to fly, becoming quadrupeds. Some pelicans developed an even stranger feature, a claw at the end of each foot elongated to resemble the blade of ice skates. This adaptation allows them to move quickly while conserving energy. The tundra sliders have a hump on the withers that serves as a fat reserve, useful when food becomes scarce. They are gregarious animals of fairly good size, with females slightly larger than males, measuring 3 meters long. The skydiver mice are very interesting small animals that have adopted a truly unique morphology. At the end of their long tail, they possess a tuft of fluffy hairs that increase air intake, allowing them to float with the winds of the tundra. These animals are insectivores, catching mosquitoes and beetles in flight from the region. 
They can hardly steer, the flaps on their tail primarily serve to deter potential predators, mimicking the wings of a toxic butterfly. To launch themselves into the air, the mice must jump from the top of a cliff or tree. When on the ground, they are very vulnerable, and mortality is very high. Surprisingly, gorillas, which were on the brink of extinction during our era, survived the sixth extinction. Over five million years, the tectonic plate supporting the African continent collided with that of Europe, closing off the Mediterranean Sea. Gorillas had to leave the remnants of tropical forests devastated by humans and ventured northward. The collared boss is their descendant, a primate completely quadrupedal, better equipped for walking than for climbing trees. They have become larger to withstand the cold and occupy the ecological niche left by ancient bisons. They move in large herds, but some males lead a more solitary life. The amoebic slug is an unexpected oddity. It appears to be a gigantic amoeba that roams the damp forest floors of tropical forests. It crawls in search of fungi and beds of bacteria, which it ingests through a massive hole that seems to serve as its mouth. It has two large tentacles that allow it both to move and to feed. They play a very important role in the undergrowth, cleaning the forest of decomposing vegetation, dead animals, or bacterial proliferation. For millions of years, spiders have maintained more or less the same appearance and ecological niche, especially in environments that have remained fairly similar, such as here in the heart of the jungle. This species of spider doesn't need to be camouflaged, with its large size, it impresses most animals in its environment. The females have a bluish abdomen, while the males, much smaller and more discreet, are completely black. It stays on the ground, far too heavy to climb trees, like modern tarantulas. The first pair of legs of this dragonfly species is particularly large. Although practical for catching its prey, which consists of insects and other invertebrates, these legs are a slight handicap during flight. Indeed, it becomes an easy target for predators, so it rarely ventures into open spaces. Being discreet and solitary, this species struggles to find mates, making reproduction very difficult. The dragonfly mantis is endangered for these reasons. The Toscamo is an example of mosquito neotini. During our era, mosquitoes begin their larval life in aquatic environments before developing into the flying insect we know. Five million years later, some species will remain aquatic throughout their entire lives, retaining only small, atrophied wings. They feed on the blood of fish and even parasitize fishing birds to colonize other ponds. Like their ancestors, these insects carry numerous diseases. The Osiris beetle is a magnificent, colorful beetle with two spots that form eyes on its shell to deter predators, however, its bright colors indicate that it is toxic. The adult feeds on leaves and nectar, but the larvae are dangerous parasites for birds and mammals. They feed on feces by attaching directly to the anus of their host, causing fatal infections. Once the host animal dies, the larvae metamorphose within the decomposing flesh to become a beetle. Some shield bugs were capable of propelling a toxic gas for defense, the blue pulse uses this ability to escape danger. The gas in question is no longer toxic but is released under such pressure that it propels the insect to over 15 meters high in barely a second and glides for several hundred meters before landing again in the forest. The perplexing shape of its elytra allows it to glide without using its wings, which are too fragile to withstand the propulsion and winds when the insect is high up.
This incredible toad moves quickly from branch to branch using its tongue, which it can shoot out rapidly for over a meter the species feeds on fish. The toad hangs by its tongue over bodies of water, waiting for prey with its eyes directed downwards. As soon as a fish swims underneath it, it surprises and engulfs the fish before moving to a new perch. The only other rare occasions this animal approaches the water is to lay its eggs, otherwise, it spends the rest of its time in the lower branches of the forest. As its name suggests, the flying feet frog has large webbed feet that allow it to glide between trees in the forest. Flying frogs existed during the Holocene, but this species has pushed the adaptation to flight to the point where it can no longer move otherwise. It has a completely arboreal lifestyle. Another peculiarity is that this frog is phytophagous, meaning it feeds on leaves, a rather unique diet among amphibians. It is a vulnerable species that relies solely on camouflage and fleeing for protection. The yew tree is a rather calm animal that feeds on berries, small animals, and fish. It's a species of crane that has become quadrupedal to move better in the dense forests it inhabits. It is often found near water sources and spends a lot of time basking in the sun. When it feels threatened, it stands up on its hind legs and flaps its wings. If the threat persists, it can attack its enemy with its large claws. It can also eat honey, its dense plumage protects it from insect stings, while its claws help it to destroy beehives. Caro appears to be an example of evolutionary reversion, but birds descend from theropod dinosaurs, not ornithischians, so it's a curious coincidence. Indeed, this parrot, itself becoming quadrupedal to occupy the ecological niche left vacant by megafauna, bears a striking resemblance to the ceratopsians of the Mesozoic era. This large animal moves in small groups in the more open areas of the forest. The horn at the tip of their beak serves as a weapon for mating battles, and their large feathered frill is unique to each individual. Once adults, individuals don't really have predators, they can uproot trees to access the leaves and fruits of the canopy. Like large animals such as sauropods or elephants, they can quickly transform a forest into a savanna, taking with them an entire ecosystem dependent on their dung and the parasites in their plumage. The brown digger is perfectly adapted for digging up tubers and underground insects in the forest. The large beak of some pelicans has hardened, and horns have grown to be able to scrape the muddy ground. This animal is solitary and rather docile, occupying the ecological niche of forest pigs from the Holocene. Females lay a single egg almost as large as themselves, reminiscent of kiwi eggs. They can live for over 50 years and are rarely attacked by predators, they can defend themselves violently with their beak. The Garipio is a quadrupedal bird that still occasionally uses its wings to glide, but this remains infrequent. Its arms are used for climbing trees, with two fingers even capable of manipulating objects. Its face has exposed skin, giving it a monkey-like appearance. Being social animals, the bare face allows for facial expressions to communicate with its peers. It's also a very noisy animal, with its cries echoing far into the forest. Eggs are incubated by all members of the clan in turns, as is the education of the young. To defend themselves, they hurl stones at their predators. Ganesh is a type of elephant that has become bipedal. As India continued to move northward, further expanding the Himalayas, southern Asia became increasingly mountainous. By becoming bipedal, these elephants became more adept at exploring new ecosystems. It also allowed them to free up their front legs, which can now manipulate objects or crush the nuts they favor. They also possess a hump on their back, similar to camels, this hump serves as a fat reserve, necessary when food becomes scarce. These elephants are slightly smaller than Asian elephants, which facilitates bipedalism and allows them to be faster.
The water bat is a bat adapted to coastal environments. During the day, it sleeps in the trees of inland tropical forests, but at night, it flies in search of fish in shallow waters. Its wings and tail have become more robust to swim in the water in pursuit of new prey. It is also quite comfortable on the ground of beaches, moving like the Cenozoic penguins. Descended from diurnal bats, it cannot echolocate, but its night vision is very good, however, for this reason, it is more comfortable on the ground than in flight at night. Here is a bat that has completely lost the ability to fly. The membrane of skin between the fingers has been absorbed, and the hand has shrunk. It has an arboreal lifestyle and is a formidable predator. It hunts alone or in small groups for prey larger than itself, its technique consisting of jumping by surprise onto large animals, which it immediately bites. Its saliva contains a mixture of very dangerous bacteria that quickly infect the wound, within a few hours, the bitten animal collapses. Then the bat can eat its prey, often joined by several others in the feast, serving themselves without hierarchy or dispute. The Kyobaku, which literally means giant tree, is the largest pig ever to exist. It is likely descended from woolly pigs because its body is covered in thick wool. It is a very slow animal, and like sloths, algae settle in the animal's wool, giving it a greenish color. Combined with its slowness, the color of its fleece provides excellent camouflage. If it remains still, the Kyobaku could easily be mistaken for other trees in the forest. With its tusks, it digs into the ground in search of roots and tubers. Females live in small groups, while males, much larger, up to 8 meters tall, are more solitary, only joining females for reproduction. As Homo sapiens went extinct, they left behind large herds of domesticated cows. The vast herds from the industrial farms of the American continent could not survive without our intervention, but the African herds were slightly wilder and were able to quickly adapt to savannas and later to forests additionally, with the extinction of African elephants, the ecological niche was vacant to accommodate very large herbivores. Bigelow is a huge cow with a calm temperament and very thick skin, especially under the belly where horn formation occurs, making the animal invulnerable. The enormous horns are present in both males and females and are a sign of good health when they are very wide. 